Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I am going to explain how to implement 8-bit register in BSDL language by using Xilinx software. But before implementing the 8-bit register, let me explain the concept of register. Registers are a collection of flip-flops and that are used to store n bit of data. As we know that one flip-flop is used to store one bit of data. Now if we can cascade n number of flip-flops then we can store n bit of data. So that is the basic concept of register. Now register can be two types serial in serial out register and serial in parallel out register. Now let me explain that with a diagram. So as we can see in this diagram it is a serial in parallel out register. Now as we can see in this example this is a 3 bit register and it is basically containing 3 D flip flops. Why we are using D flip flops? As we have discussed in the previous lecture that D flip flop store the value based on the input to it. So whatever be the input to this flip flop that value is going to be stored in that flip flop and that is why for register creation we are using D flip flops. Now in this example this is a 3 bit register which containing 3 D flip flops. Suppose this is the D2 flip flop, this is D1 flip flop and this is D0 flip flop. And why it is serial in parallel out register? Because the input is fed into the first register D2 serially one by one. But this register is going to generate output parallelly from all the registers. So you can see uh, after each clock cycle, uh, the D2 flip flop is going to get an output Q2. D1 flip flop is going to generate another output Q1 and D0 flip flop is going to generate another output Q0. So after each clock cycle, we are going to get output from all the flip flops. That is why it is parallel out and serially because in each clock cycle the, only the first flip flop D2 is going to receive the value serial. Now let me explain with another example. Suppose we want to store some value 101 into this 3 bit register. So we want to store this 3 bit data. Now in the 0th clock let us assume the initial state of these flip flops are 0. So input is also 0. In the first clock cycle, the first input which is LSB1 will be fed into the D2 flip flop. So D2 flip flop is going to receive the value 1 and D1 and D0 flip flop will have the initial value 0. Now in the second clock cycle, D2 flip flop is going to receive the second input which is 0 and D1 flip flop is going to receive the previous value of D2 flip flop which is 1 and D0 flip flop will have the initial value 0. Similarly in the third clock cycle the D2 flip flop is going to receive the third value which is 1 and D1 flip flop is going to receive the previous value of D2 flip flop which is 0 and D0 flip flop is going to receive the previous value of D1 flip flop which is 1. So after the third clock cycle the output Q2 will be 1, output Q1 will be 0 and output Q0 will be 1. So you can see after the third clock cycle you will get the output 101 which is the input. So obviously for 3 bit we need in 3 number of clock cycles. Similarly for processing n bit data we need in clock cycles in case of serial in parallel out register. Now let me explain the concept of serial in serial out register. As we can see the difference in case of serial in serial out register the input is serially in into the first register D2 one by one and this uh, register is going to give us the output serially from the last flip flop which is D0. So there is no temporary output generation from D2 and D1 flip flop. It is going to give us the output only from the last flip flop serially. And that is why the name serial in serial out register. Now again explain this with an example. So suppose the input string is 101. And in this example initially assume the 
flip-flop states are all zero. In the first clock cycle, the D2 flip-flop will receive the first input LSB1 and D1, D0 flip-flop will have the initial value zero. Similarly, in the second clock cycle, D2 flip-flop is going to receive the second input which is zero. As we can see in here, it is going to receive the input zero and D1 flip-flop is going to receive the previous value of D2 which is here 1 and D0 flip-flop will have the initial value 0. Similarly, after the third clock cycle, the D2 flip-flop is going to receive the MSB1 and D1 flip-flop is going to receive the value of previous value of D2 which is 0 and D0 is going to receive the previous value of D1 which is 1. So, as we can see, after the third clock cycle, we are going to get our first output from Q0. So, for 3-bit data, we need 3 clock cycles to get our first output. So, obviously, for n-bit data, n number of clock cycles is required. So, after n clock cycle, we are going to get our first output. And after the fourth clock cycle, the D1 flip-flop is going to receive the value, previous value from D2 flip-flop and D0 flip-flop is going to receive the previous value of D1 flip-flop. So, after the fifth clock cycle, you can see that D0 flip-flop is going to receive the previous value of D1 flip-flop. So, after the fifth clock cycle, we will get all the outputs which are 1, 0, 1. So, for 3-bit, we need n number of clock cycles. So, from there, we can get the formula for n-bit data, 2n-1 clock cycles are required to process all the data. Now, let us explain this with, an, a, a, with VHDL language. So, let me create a project in Xilinx software. Let us name it register. After that, create a new source, select VHDL module, suppose in this example we are going to implement 8-bit register, and as we have noticed in this case, the, in this example we are going to use serial in serial out register, and it has one input which is serial in and one output which is serial out. So, and there is, there is another input which is clock. So, clock will be one input and another input will be serial in and there will be a single output which is serial out, which was uh, Q0 in our example. Now, one more thing uh, important which we need to know that uh, as we can see in this example, there is a multiple flip-flops is there and all are connected by intermediary wires. And in case of VHDL language, we represent the values on those intermediary wires by using signals. So in this example, we are going to use signals which will store the intermediary values in the wires or buses. And as we are going to implement 8-bit flip-flops, so, there will be 8 intermediary wires. So, we need to have a temporary signal variable of length 8 to store 8 temporary values in those wires. So, let me create signal and let us name it temp and the type of the signal will be standard logic but the length will be 8. So, I need to use standard logic vector. And after that, uh, the length will be 8, so 7 down to 0. After that, put a semicolon. And we need to write down before the begin and construct because uh, these are the internal words. And after that, let me write down my concept of this uh, register into a process. So let me create a process which is going to receive the clock as input. And after that, I am going to create the begin and end construct of this process. So, this is the beginning of the process and it will be end of the process and everything will be inside it.
now let me first check whether uh, we can send the data to the register or not that the register is enabled or not and it was uh, like previous concept we just want to check whether the clock is positive or not that is clock is one or not and if there is any clock event or not so if uh, the, these two scenario occurs in that case we can say that clock is enabled now if the clock is enabled we need to process the data one by one into all the flip-flops so we are going to run a for loop for i in 0 to 6 loop we are going to run a loop and within this loop the temporary variable i plus 1 or temporary signal i should say the temporary signal i plus 1 is going to receive the previous value of the previous register temp y so this is how i will iterate through the loop and after that end the loop and after that when the loop is over the temp 0 is going to receive the input which is s in in our example serial in so first uh, where's is going to receive the input from stand s in and after that let me close the if construct now after the end of the process we need to save the output into the actual output which is s out so s out is going to receive the output from the last wire and the name of the last wire is temp7 so this is the last flip flop uh, which has a wire temp7 and this temp7 is going to save the output value into s out which is the final output of this register now put a semicolon save it and after saving it compile it As you can see compilation is successful so go to the behavioral simulation and there let me create a new source click the test bench waveform let me name it testing and in this example let me consider dual edge suppose the time duration on which uh, the clock will be high is 50 and it will be uh, down for 50 nanosecond and the initial stage also 50 so in this example we are going to consider a small window and for me it was uh, good to explain how to use the xilinx for uh, different setups so uh, this is my test bench waveform and as you can see So initially let me set this value 1 then 0 then again 1 0 1 0 1 0 let me keep on changing this value from 1 to 0 0 to 1 and after that save it and go to the process and simulate it. So simulation window has appeared and as we have explained earlier that in case of serial in serial out register if there is a nb data then we are going to get our first output after the nth bit. In this example we are using 8 bit register so we are going to get our output after the 8th bit. So as you can see this is the first, second, third, fourth and in all that duration the s out is 0. So, 5, 6, 7, there is also the S out final output is 0. After the 8th clock cycle, we are going to get the first output which is 1 after the 8th clock cycle. So, this is how we can implement serial in serial out register.